Hey guys, welcome to another technical session where I will walk you through the technical capabilities of our powerful V-Slip Sankey chart. So, the purpose of this uh, session is to show you a little bit of the features that we have, how to build a Sankey chart, but also how to make the most out of it and naturally, you know, what type of data it works best with. So, I'm currently in ClickSense standard dashboard. Bear in mind this is a live demo. Um, and on the left hand side you will have the Vizlib library, uh, Sankey chart and Vizlib library bundle. So you drag and drop this on the screen and what is asking you is you need to at least define two dimensions, right? Don't forget Sankey chart is a flow diagram so you need to display a flow between dimension one and two so it doesn't make sense to only define one dimension. For this purpose, right, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm looking at the some standard consumer uh, sales data, nothing special, it's part of the ClickSense app. And I'm going to uh, choose two dimensions. You see, you know, we have several here, but just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to select product group as the first one, and as the second one, something that is not directly related, right? Uh, but obviously in the same data sets. So for example, region A. Right, as a measure, um, just to start off, you know, we have some master items here and I will select average sales to uh, visualize it. So that's all you need to define, two dimensions, one measure, and your Sankey chart immediately starts visualizing, visualizing. And you can see here immediately, you know, that on the left-hand side, the product groups, which are sorted obviously by the number of, of absolute value of their average sales, and how they flow into the different regions, Central, Western, Southern, and Northeast, right? Now, the beautiful thing about Sankey Chart is, you know, it's fully responsive, so it resizes on, on your screen size, but uh, it becomes more valuable if you start adding more dimensions to this, such as, for example, um, the regional sales manager to see, you know, who's actually responsible for these kind of uh, products. So I just add it here, and you see it immediately gets added and starts plotting. Um, further to this, we can also add a fourth dimension, you know, which is perhaps more related to the customer, right? I mean, we have a product, we have a sales kind of responsible person, a region. Let's also add like a customer type uh, in this set of dimensions, right? And it automatically starts plotting uh, the whole relationship in the data. Um, you can obviously rearrange it right on the fly, put the customer type name as a second position or as a third position, and so on and so on. It completely updates. Now, with this, um, you know, bear in mind the Sankey chart can only show one metric at a time, but I'll show you some tricks in a second how you can still leverage multiple metrics and dimensions and make it a very interactive chart for your user base or your business users. Right. Um, if we look at the various kind of settings, obviously, you know, you can look at the sorting, right? You can make it ascending, you can make it descending, and then it rearranges it. Um, furthermore, you also have some handling on the data, right? Um, you know, just to be safe and just to be clear, you know, you might add a dimension such as, you know, transaction ID, which will completely blow the Sankey chart. To avoid that, we have applied a default limit which you can, however, you know, override here if you want to display more nodes. So by default, we are limited to 40, but you can increase that. You can even put a variable here, which will allow you to control it, perhaps with a slider, right? Just a good whole trick. Um, looking at the appearance, and I think this is one of the most important things and relevant, right, with any Vizlib object, as a matter of fact, that's a value proposition. Styling your chart, styling your psyche chart, and the way you want to see this, you want to visualize it. So, Obviously, it's organized around different kind of styles, but you know, looking for example at the links, right? You can uh, see that the colors are currently blend between those. You can choose a, a static uh, color if you wanted to. Personally, I always think it's more valuable if you see the blend because it's more natural. You can show and hide the individual values, right? Which are plotted here. It makes it a little too crowded sometimes, but you know, it's entirely up to you. But you see also, you know, that they shrink, so they all fit nicely in size. Uh, where it is. Now, I think more relevant kind of styling options is obviously here, you know, perhaps you want to increase the node widths, right? If you don't have so many dimensions in your Sankey chart, you want to make sure you kind of fill in the space, you know, to highlight to the eye, you know, which dimensions have the most uh, attribution to the totals of the a respective metric, right? And um, you can obviously increase the distance, you know, make it a little bit more sparse, but generally I, I like it, you know, very, very close to each other. 
Um, you know, labels, you can play around, you can make them horizontal, vertically. Obviously, it depends a little bit on your label length, right? And um, that also uh, relates to the size. Uh, don't make them too big if you have too many, keep it low and just make sure that it looks presentable. Very important are the colors, right? And here you have a lot of flexibility depending on your use case. So A, you can choose to color your psychic chart by note or by dimension, right? And by dimension, I mean every vertical kind of uh, uh, dimension set, right? And you have a rich uh, collection of custom, uh, custom palettes, such as multicolor, you can actually even define uh, your own custom palette by defining a list of hexadecimals. One thing is important, theming will be supported as well in the near future, just bear with us. Um, if you look at the nodes, right, you can also define so-called uh, gradients, right? So instead of just having a collection of colors, it might make more sense to switch this to gradients, which will immediately highlight or low light the biggest dimension values, right? So this is important if you're looking at a global kind of uh, view and you want to see, well, actually domestic are the ones with the highest average sales compared to product produced and so on and so on. You can choose different kind of colors here, rag, you know, up to you which ones you prefer. And you can actually even modify them, right? If you want to change a little bit the gradient points or even add more to this, but that's more advanced usage. Right, so looking at, I'm gonna leave it now relatively simple here by dimension, but you know, what makes this now a little bit more interesting is, fair enough, that's a kind of a fixed view of your Sankey chart. You can obviously select individual, hover over individual values to see the split across their dimensions to the right and across their dimensions to the left. And the same also when you go to the customer name here. You can also, if you have a list of a lot of individual dimension values, you can actually scroll down and have a detailed look if there's something that you cannot really identify, uh, but you can zoom in and, you know, if you click the home button at the top right, you can actually zoom out again. Now, with this, actually, there's two more kind of very powerful capabilities and features with our Sankey chart, which is the alternative dimensions and measures. So sometimes, you know, you want to give the user more flexibility, more power to explore the Sankey chart as, uh, aside from the way you have predefined it before. So the way to best achieve this is to, to go to the data section here and define alternative dimensions. So here you can go and say, look, we're looking at product group, but perhaps you want to look at product uh, basket product description, right? Or basket product line description. So you can add it. Nothing changes because it's an alternative dimension, right? But once you've defined it, you see a tiny one, which indicates that, hey, there are more dimensions here than the ones you can see, which if you click on this, you can see now that you can actually swap this on the fly and you see the Sankey chart updating dynamically. As a matter of fact, you also have the ability to rearrange it horizontally, right? So let's say you want to see region name next to product group. So you can actually, now that you have alternative dimensions, flick this to the second place and you see this auto updates automatically all without having to go to the edit menu it's important that these changes are just temporary once i revisit my app i'm back to my original view but it allows the user to explore a little bit the dimensions in a more interactive way the same also applies and that's actually quite powerful with the measures so here you can add let's say um you know Da, 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 uh, let's say order count, which could be interesting, and perhaps even, uh, da, 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 let's scroll down, sales, no, we already have a sales measure, I think it's more interesting, let's look at costs, so sales cost amount here, so I can put in a metric, I can, you know, obviously aggregate it on the fly, give it a description here, and you see these, again, these measures are playing here in the alternative section, so when you go to the measure on the left hand side, you can flick and you can change and now look at the sales cost amount. So you can actually now enable the user to do some interactive exploration where they can look at some data sets and they can quickly test and explore some hypotheses they have. So looking at the average sales, we see, you know, Japan is the highest region, but if I'm looking at the order count, as a matter of fact, South America has the highest order counts but not the highest sales. So that's a question that you can, you know, test and then further dig down, drill down to, to explore. 
One thing that is uh, actually very important um, that we want to uh, highlight here as well is the ability to add conditional show in height, right? So for example, let's take another uh, dimension, which is uh, sales rep, actually, sales representative names, individual salespersons. So one thing that you see is, is that this is obviously now becoming too granular Right, you immediately get here the error that your data set exceeds the limit of nodes. You have 25 nodes. Obviously, this is something that you can, as I highlighted, overwrite. So you can go into the data handling section and you can uh, put in a higher number than 25. Just bear in mind, right, let's put in like 2000 for the sake of it, that obviously the more data points you display, the more this will affect the performance of your, uh, of your chart, right? because as you see, it's very, very cluttered on the right hand side. So one thing that you can do here to avoid kind of performance issues uh, is to go to the sales rep and actually use the show and hide condition, right? So here you can click on the conditional uh, section and you can by default hide it. So uh, ultimately it will be hidden but it will own and not even calculate it. So you see now it's back to becoming very responsive. But you could, for example, say here, all right, only show the sales representative names if they get selected count of a dimension of your choice. Let's say product group, right? Here is uh, greater than zero. Um, I think I misspelled the dimension. Okay, that's about field names, so I need to correct this. Product group description, let's put it in there, here we are. Right. Cool, right, so it's not selected. Now, if I come here, for example, select produce now, right, it recognizes the selection has been made, and now it updates the sales rep on the fly. So this is, for example, a way how you can achieve a sort, sort, some sort of a drill down experience in your Saki chart and showing high dimensions depending on the context, right? And again, you know, even if you have a lot of tiny flows, don't forget, you can zoom in, you can look at individual values as you see fit. So it's highly interactive. And don't forget, it's supported in printing, so you can take a snapshot, you know, use it in story mode, export it to PowerPoint, to PDF. It's actually very, very interesting, and very powerful. And another very, very interesting visualization type that uh, is currently not available out of the box and available to you via Vizlet. So thank you very much for listening and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any more video requests, please give us a shout and we'll be more than happy to record these for you. Thank you very much.